Hello and welcome to Rule of Threes video review for Pandora's Tower, an action RPG developed by Ganbarion and published by Exceed. I'm Roy Manon and I'm the only one doing this review, um, just because I was the only one who got it. So uh, I'm going to jump straight into this review. So the story of Pandora's Tower is you play as the character Arion, I believe that's how you say his name, as I recall. And your girlfriend gets afflicted with a curse that is turning her slowly into a monster in order to stop her from turning into a monster. You have to go to this tower and find bot or monsters and basically rip their flesh from their body and feed it to her. Uh, in order to cure it, you have to get specific uh, flesh from thing or creatures called the Masters. And uh, you just give it to her and the goal is to get all the Masters flesh and cure her. That's the basic concept of it. There's a lot more to it. There's a lot of lore and backstory that you can find by getting journals and the articles in the game that uh, give a little more detail. There is a war going on between two countries as well that plays into this. And overall, the story is actually really, really good. Um, I got really caught up in a lot of the backstory because they do set up a lot of lore in this world. So I, I kind of want to see... Maybe not a direct sequel, but something that's still in this universe because it's very interesting and um, it was enjoyable. And uh, character-wise, uh, Arion doesn't talk a whole lot. He's more of a silent protagonist, uh, but his backstory is pretty good. Same with uh, Elena, I think that's her name. I forget. And then the other character they deal with a lot is uh, a old woman called Mavda. She's also an interesting character uh, just because of the dynamic she has and you kind of wonder what she's up to and or what she's even why she's helping you with this stuff because she is the one that takes you to this tower to cure because so she's the only one who knows how to cure it so anyway uh story wise it's great so gameplay there's a lot of gameplay elements uh it's an action rpg so uh you have a sword and you just swing that thing around uh there's diff you can extend the length of combos by upgrading weapons which i'll talk about later and you can hold uh, attack to do charge moves, and there's, uh, I believe, three weapons you get throughout the game. Uh, there's, like, a, me a or broad sword, which is what you start off with, and you get, like, sh a short sword and, like, a scythe thing, and they're uh, one's faster, one's slower, and one's medium. But they're, they're all fun. Um, but the main thing, other than your swords, and this is how you kill a lot of enemies, including boxes, is you get a chain. Uh, this chain can be used to uh, stun enemies, link enemies together so they take the damage at the same time, and rip their flesh from their body and get items from them as well. It's a nice mechanic. Uh, it works very well. Uh, with the Wii, you have to point at the screen and uh, click on it, or the enemy, and then you just yank it back and that pulls it. It's also used to solve puzzles, which uh, I'll go into now. Uh, the game itself is very Zelda-esque with puzzles. Each tower has its own set of puzzles that you know you have to kind of take your time to figure out. Um, they're not super difficult, but you know you have to kind of think a little bit to figure some of them out, especially in the later towers. It usually start, it starts off easy and they get harder as you go. With that said, you have to be careful with, or you know kind of quick with learning puzzles because you are timed. Uh, in the bottom left-hand corner, there is a little circle meter thing. And that is how much time you can spend in the tower before your girlfriend turns into a monster. Uh, you don't want to let that run out. Is the goal. If it runs out, you lose the game. But you also, have to be, you also want to get back to the tower in time because there's other penalties that happen if you stay in there too long. And she's, she already starts morphing into a monster the longer you're in there. That's what the blue and red part of the meter is if you look on the screen. Uh, you get There's some negative effects that uh, affect affinity, which is another thing I'll go into later. Uh, but like I said, they're, it's, you're timed, but you have enough time to usually get through most of it. You can warp out, and then it, you don't have to like start the entire tower over. You just have to get back to uh, where you were, and you can usually create shortcuts, which is kind of nice. Uh, but I'm going to get into towers now, because that's where the puzzle will located. So there's, throughout the game, you will go through 12 towers. Each tower is, well, not each tower, but... Uh, every tower is either uh, one of the elements of like uh, wood, fire, water earth and metal uh, themed and you just go through them and the nice thing about it at least the first one it gets kind of repetitive because once again there's uh, two sets of towers there's the first five or there's the first five second five and the last two the second five that you get to are pretty much exactly the same as the first five with the puzzles changed and usually it's a little bigger so it, level design's a little repetitive as well as uh, the gameplay is also uh, kind of repetitive on a whole 
And I kind of wanted to hope that each tower would be a little bit different instead of just kind of a copy-paste, the same five to the second five. The last two are ex also exactly the same, except they're mirrors of each other. That's the kind of an interesting tower to go through. I don't want to spoil how that one works, but the last two towers are kind of fun to mess with. Uh, so at the at top of every tower, there is a boss. In order to kill this boss, you have to figure find its weak points and use the chain to rip its flesh out of its... Because you have to... It has like a weak point, you just rip the flesh out of it. Each boss has uh, different mechanics and different ways you have to figure it out. It, it, in itself, the bosses tend to have, be kind of puzzly. And uh, I didn't find any of the bosses ridiculously hard or easy. They're all kind of, you know, once you figure it out, you know, you get the hang of it. But, you know, they can be kind of tricky if you uh, just want to, you know, have an easy day and just easy find. Because you'll know where their weak point is, but you have to figure out kind of how to get to it in the most efficient way without killing yourself. Um, with that, I'm going to go into Affinity. So, like I said, the meter down there, There's, if you look right above it, there's a yellow, like, double helix lighty thing. That's the affinity meter. It's how your relationship between Arion and the girlfriend Elena or something. I forget. Anyway, uh, that affects your ending. That's all it really does. Uh, there are multiple endings to this game depending on how well you get that affinity bar up. And you get it up by giving Elena gifts and items from the towers, as well as not taking too long and you know talking to her and doing you know just be, you know interacting with her for the most part and giving her stuff. Uh, as you do that, the bar will go up. However, if you take too long, or you give her something she doesn't like, the bar will go down. And that's Affinity. It's nice. It's a nice mechanic. Uh, it, it, it's really hard to tell if it's going up at times, but it does go up. Uh, you just kind of have to pay attention. Uh, but I do like how it affects the endings. Each ending is, you know, if you have a terrible relationship, you're going to get a terrible ending. If you have, you know, the best one, you'll get the best ending. And it kind of, you know, it gives you... The, a little bit of replayability if you want to see all the endings because they are while similar very different in how they end and the last thing i want to go into for major gameplay is the crafting system uh if for those of you who've played the game near the crafting system is very similar so as you go through the tower you find items and stuff you then take these items and you upgrade your weapons by having the right amount of certain items and it'll upgrade your weapon or you get certain items you can create new items or equipment and stuff uh, I like it. It's a lot better than in the years where it took forever to find some of the rarer stuff. This one, uh, you can either buy some of the rare materials or just make them with a couple of common items. So it's not as big of a grind if you played near uh, this one. But it works very similar. It is actually very uh, fun. It gives uh, all the items you find in the tower a use. And you can want to uh, just kind of stock up on them. But you also have an inventory space thing. So you have to be careful not to pick up everything that you see. Otherwise, you might run a room and let you go back to the base and put stuff in a trunk so i thought the crafting system was very nice uh one, the only real issue i had with it was there are certain items that i don't know i guess harder to find i guess that's just the rare thing but yeah some of the rare, also the craft the rare items some it requires some of the rare items it was kind of messy ui as well, well not really but let's see no the crafting is okay i can't really find a real fault other than you know it does take time to do uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to conclude this review. So uh, I give Pan or Parent Rule of Three for those of you who've never watched the video, and this is the first one. Uh, we don't do a point system because I find numbers arbitrary and debatable. Instead, we do buy rent pass because that's you know still debatable, but it has nothing to do with numbers. It's just an overall factor of you know whether we think you should buy rent or not play this game. So buy means we think it's worth whatever the full price of the game is on release because it's uh, there's just that much enjoyability you you will get from it. Uh, rent means, you know, it was a good game, maybe not worth full price, you know, wait for it to go half off on Steam, or you buy used copy at, like, GameStop, or just rent it from Gamefly or Blockbuster if you have one around you, or Redbox, or something like that. And pass means that the game needs to be destroyed as quickly as possible and never see the light of day again. So, I give Pandora's Tower a rent. The gameplay in the towers just get a little too repetitive, However, you know, the endings and, uh, like I said, the concepts of it are very enjoyable. I do think, you know, everybody, if you have a Wii and want a good, you know, action RPG for it, since there's not a whole lot, this is a very solid game. But, uh, yeah, I, I just don't, like I said, it just gets very repetitive and kind of boring after a while. 
Uh, so that's it. Uh, I don't know what game's going to be next because it's a side review. Uh, most likely it will either be... I'm not going to say because I don't know. However, this game will be good for the next giveaway we're doing, which is going to be a Remember Me game. For, or remember me for any console that you want or you have you can say you want the last of us and we'll give away this uh, special edition for that if you want the last of us for the ps3 uh so just make sure to leave a comment below to get entries into that like us on facebook and twitter there should be links somewhere on our page and stuff and here as well as check out our website and follow us at rulo3.com uh make sure to subscribe to our channel above if you're not already to get the latest updates on our reviews and news stuff and that's it. So thanks for listening and always remember to trust in the rule of three.